First Chapter Friday, Something in Between by Melissa De La Cruz. Chapter 1. The truth is, immigrants tend to be more American than people born here. Chuck Palahniuk from Choke. First you have to howl out. Suck your belly button against your spine. Pull up toward your rib cage. Maintain eye contact. Remember to breathe. Feel your muscles tighten up. Make yourself compact. Lift up, fly. Attitude is everything. Believe you can do that stunt. Stay tight, smile. Keep everything together as you're twisting through the air. Trust yourself, trust your team. Let doubt creep in and you'll fall. Plus, you'll let down the whole squad. And that's the worst thing you can do as cheer captain, other than bossing everyone around like an aggro queen bee. There's no one more intense than a cheerleader. Although, according to every Hollywood movie ever made, we're a bunch of ditzy boy crazy backstabbers as if, don't they get it? Cheerleaders are part of a team and a good team trusts each other because the only thing stopping you from cracking your head open on the gym floor is your teammates. Cheer makes you tough, loyal, strong. Hit, 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 pull, Coach Davis shouts, her voice echoing against the gym walls. We jump three times in a row, extending our arms and legs into perfect toe touches, then tuck, flipping backward onto the mats. Everyone sticks the tuck except for Kayla. She's been struggling with her tumbling even though she used to be one of the best tumblers on the team. Her mind has been somewhere else for a while, worried about her parents, who aren't getting along too well. I make a mental note to ask her how she's doing after practice. Maybe offer to help her brush up on some more moves before she gets put on probation or kicked off the squad. She's my best friend. But we haven't hung out much since I've been studying for midterms and trying to get my college applications done. Keep your feet together, Santos, Coach barks at me. They're wobbling on your landing. I nod, even though I'm annoyed that she singled me out and didn't say anything to Kayla. I know Coach is bringing me down a notch on purpose. She doesn't want me to end up with an oversized ego. That's why I got voted captain in the first place. I know you have to sacrifice yourself for the team, for the stunt, or else everything falls apart like a crumbling pyramid. Sometimes the other girls tease me. You're so perfect, Jasmine. You do everything right. You were junior class president, chair captain, honor roll, volunteering. Don't you ever get tired? Never, I say with a smile. Except the truth is, I'm always tired. But I can never admit it, not to my friends, especially not to my family. Let's run through the routine until the end of practice, Coach orders. She walks over to the squad system to sound system to start the music. Most of the girls start taking their positions, but Emily crosses her arms. I'm exhausted. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Her cheeks are flaming red on her Irish complexion. Don't be a drama queen, Deandra says, whipping her dark braids like the queen of the Nile. She looks like Halle Berry, but prettier, with gorgeous, naturally thick eyelashes. You're only tired because you stayed up texting Brandon all night. He likes my texts, Emily grins. She raises one eyebrow like she's holding onto a juicy secret. Creative emojis. I tell them to hush. It's my senior year and last chance to win at nationals. If we want to win this time, the whole team has to be serious about practice. We don't have any time not to be on point. Positions, I yell out. Coach nods. I count down to begin the routine. Five, six, seven, eight. Music blasts from the speakers. One routine begins with high intensity tumbling. We sprint across the mats, propelling our bodies through the air, hitting our handsprings, layouts, and tucks right on the beat. The girls are getting even more pumped as they move into formation for the flyer stunts. I step up onto the bases, let them propel me up into a barrel roll, and fall back into their cradle. The stunts are getting more and more complex, and one of our flyers loses her balance during a dismount on a pyramid, smacking against her back spotter and sending her to the ground. The bases help the spotter back up. Coach stops the mix. She's frowning. We got this. Come on, ladies, I shout. Again, from the beginning. We practice our routine over and over again until all of the flyers are hitting their stunts. Our muscles ache and our arms are slick with sweat, but the better we get, the more pumped we are. 
So by the end of practice, everyone is cheering louder, staying tighter, and flying higher. That's more like it. We're about to go through our last run when Mrs. Garcia pushes through the swing doors and power walks towards us. Her scuffed pleather heels thump against the wooden floors. Weird. What's the college counselor doing at cheer practice? Everyone else must have noticed her too because they're all chatting and whispering instead of getting into their positions. Coach, Coach catches her eyes and turns to us. Ladies, listen up. I want you to pair up and practice your back walkovers, back tucks, then cool down with stretches and splits, holding each other's side for 30 seconds each. Spot for each other. Start slow. Keep them controlled. As she joins Mrs. Garcia, I pair up with Kayla and help her slowly ease into a back bend. She tries to kick up with her foot, but can't catch the momentum, so I help guide her through the move. Kayla Paredes is curvy with a tiny waist, curly dark hair, and a quick smile. Boys have been worshiping at her feet since we were 12, but she tires of them easily. She's fifth generation Mexican-American, which means she learned Spanish in class just like I did. Movie night on Friday, she asks, my house? I'm about to say no, I have to study, but it's been ages and we need to catch up. Perfect, I tell her. I'll have to clear it with my mom, but it should be okay. Let's make chocolate chip cookies. With extra chocolate chips, Kayla grins. After a couple of minutes, Coach calls out to me. Santos, Mrs. Garcia needs a word with you. Me? Is something wrong? Uncertainty creeps into my stomach. It's October, and I've been trying to narrow down my list of colleges. Did I miss an early application deadline? I've been coming to Mrs. Garcia's office every couple of weeks since junior year to make sure I'm on track. Could she have forgotten to tell me something important? I help Kayla up before walking over, trying not to look too worried. Coach winks at me as she passes by on her way back to the group, and I'm relieved. This can only mean something good. I have something special for you, Mrs. Garcia says as she hands me an envelope. She folds her arms, a slight smile turning up the corners of her mouth. My heart begins to beat when I see the fancy logo printed in the official navy blue ink on the top right corner. United States National Scholarship Program, Department of Education. Somehow, I know I'm holding my future in my hands, the one I've worked so hard for, the one my parents have dreamed of ever since we moved here from the Philippines when I was only nine years old. Danny was a toddler and Isco was still a newborn. I remember holding Danny's hand on the plane while my mom cradled Isco on her lap as the plane rushed down the runway, lifting off towards America. I wrote about it in my application essay, how one of my earliest memories is of looking out the window at our first house in California, at the bright lights and the stark silhouettes of palm trees, and how different it was from the view of the green and wet mountains in our house in Antipolo, where it was always muggy and raining we often kept the mosquito screens closed. I've come to think of America as an open window, open to new possibilities, to new life promised to those who journey from far away to reach its shores. The National Scholarship Award is one of the most prestigious in the nation, bestowed upon only the top high school students, the best of the best, who are chosen not only on their grades and scores, but on their personal essays and teacher recommendations. It's a bit like applying to college. I guess, but it's even harder than getting into the Ivy League. I work so hard on my application, and I want it so badly. Now that it's here, I'm shaking. Mrs. Garcia puts her hand on my shoulder, startling me back to the present. I'm so proud of you, she says, like I'm her own daughter. I tear the envelope open, nearly ripping the letter apart. As I unfold the letter, my eyes drift to the signature at the bottom. It's actually signed, not printed by the President of the United States. I return to the top and begin reading the body of the letter. Dear Miss De Los Santos, I am pleased to offer you a National Scholarship Award in recognition of your outstanding academic achievement. The award includes a financial grant covering four years of tuition to the college of your choice. Only 300 students out of thousands of highly qualified applicants are chosen each year making the award one of the most competitive in the nation. You are among a select group of astonishing young people, people who by the ages of 16 and 17 have not only succeeded academically, but have conducted innovative medical research, played with the Los, Ange An Los Angeles Philharmonic, 
competed in the Olympics, launched companies, volunteered for international social service organizations, and more. National scholars go to go on to attend our nation's top universities and use their gifts to improve both our country and the world. It is my distinct pleasure to invite you to attend the National Scholarship Recognition Program to celebrate your achievement and meet the government officials, educators, musicians, scientists, business leaders, and past scholars. You will also have the opportunity to visit historic museums and monuments, as well as attend recitals, receptions, and official ceremonies as guests of the Department of Education. Please complete and return the form included with this letter. Additional details about the trip to Washington, D.C. will be sent within the following weeks. Congratulations. I'm looking forward to seeing what you'll do to make a brighter future for your country. Yours, the President of the United States. I can't breathe. This is the happiest day of my life. Everything I've given up, the hours of sleep, the driver's license, because my parents wouldn't allow me to learn, all the parties I never attended, all the fun I've never had, all the boys I've never kissed. Nothing compares to this scholarship. Mrs. Garcia shuffles against the gym floor, leaving small smudges on the wood. This is a huge deal, Jasmine. There hasn't been a national scholar from our town as long as I've been here. It's the highest honor a student can be awarded. A full ride to any college of my choice. My parents won't have to worry about not being able to afford tuition. It almost takes my breath away. I can see it so clearly. My future. College, graduate school. I don't know yet what I want to do, but I knew, do know that winning at the mediocrity is my American dream. A successful career and a handsome husband, a family, I'm old fashioned that way. Maybe because I'm Filipino, but ever since I was a kid, I've wanted a family of my own and a marriage like the one my parents have. Corny, I know, but hey, I'm an American girl and I want it all. I worked hard for this, gave up everything. Some of my friends tease me that I'm 17 going on 35. Doesn't matter now. What's certain is that I'm going to be stuck, I'm not going to be stuck with my parents' limited options. My mom graduated top of her class in the Philippines, but in America, she cleans up vomit in a hospital. And my dad, the smartest man I know, drives a bus for a living. But they always believed in their children, became American like I am now, and the sky is the limit. And here it is. The sky is on fire. This is it. My year. My shot. Thanks, Hamilton. The exhilaration is almost as good, if not better, as sticking a killer landing at Nationals. And that is Chapter 1 of Something in Between by Melissa De La Cruz. If you'd like to read more, it's available here at the LRC. All you have to do is email me and ask to check it out. We have curbside pickup available. See you soon, Mustangs.